Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So, this morning, we are going to read from Matthew. It's Matthew 11, um, 16 through 19, and then 25 through 30. So, it's Matthew 11, 16 through 19, 25 through 30. But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their playmates. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. The son of man comes eating and drinking and they say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from, from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> so, um, very cool stuff in this passage. And, and this is Jesus speaking too, just so everybody got their head on straight here. This is Jesus speaking to the crowd and, uh, and they're standing around, you know, listening and, and asking questions about, you know, who's, who's John, who are you, what's going on? Um, so, uh, it's, I, I think it's kind of, at least to me, it's an interesting thing because <clears throat> you tend to think about, or I tend to think about how people perceive God, you know, and, you know, I think, I really think everybody in some way is searching for God. They might say it, they might not or whatever, but it's, <clears throat> I don't think people can get away from uh, wanting to know more, wanting to know more about God, wanting to know more about truth because, because the, 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 the way it comes out, sometimes it might not necessarily be, I want to know more about God. But they'll say, "I want to know more about truth." I think you're you're seeing that if you really pay attention to the some of the stuff that's going on in the world today, you'll see that as as actual that's true, because people are always searching and striving to 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 get to a deeper meaning of something, um, and that's it's actually really cool because <clears throat> the the one person who holds all meaning together is God. So the more you strive to get this deeper understanding of whatever it is that you want to know, the closer you get to God. You can't help it. Um, but I think a lot of times in that, in that uh, maybe that quest for knowledge or whatever you want to call it, and searching for God, you know, we, we tend to want to find God the way we want to find God. Um, we, we look for God in nature we look for God in people we look for God in the goodness of things right uh, and it's that's not bad because you can see God in everything you can see God in a rainbow in a bird or in a in a person you know in some of the things that, that goes on um, you can catch that you can catch the glimpses of the Holy Spirit but you can't stop at that a lot of times people might, you know, you, you might see something and you think, oh, that's really cool. There's God. And then you go, okay. And then you go off and do your thing. Um, that's a glimpse of 
something that that maybe God is doing, but that's not necessarily God. It's like watching a, a tree, right? Watching, you, you can't see the wind blow. You can see the effects of the wind. You can see the trees swaying and that kind of thing, but you can't see the wind, right? So what we're trying to do is get to that essence, right, of who is God. And, and not, it's not just a who is God, because what, the more you try to strive to find who God is, the more you start to re understand who you are and your relationship with God. So it's, it's, a, it's a very cool thing. It's a very cool endeavor, something that we'll never get through in all of life. We'll never get finished with that. Um, it's a very cool thing, though. But, you know, a lot of times I think we, we run across certain things, especially in Scripture. It, it's, if you ever think about um, how jewelry or, or anything, anything like shiny, a piece of shiny metal, anything like that, it gets polished, right? And the polishing, when you, when you polish anything like that, you start with some rough things, sandpaper, that kind of stuff, and you sand it. You're sanding all those rough edges off. And you, you keep sanding with ever fine stuff, right? Finer, finer grit sandpaper. And you can get down to steel wool where it's just, you know, it's, it's really, really fine. Still polishing, but it's putting a shine on it. But you got to take those rough edges off. And that's one of the things that Scripture will do for you. It will polish you up. God is trying his best to shape you up. And, and a lot of times when you read Scripture, it might... Uh, remove some of those things, those old standing things that you've always thought was true or that your granny told you or your granddaddy told you or some elder at, at church from way back when or something. Uh, because I think it's one of the things here that, and, and um, I know this might rub, rub people the wrong way, but think about Jesus drinking. Because a lot of people that say, well, I'm Christian and I don't drink. Well, Jesus drank. It says right here. Here, take this out here. This is my placeholder. Sweet lady gave me this years ago. Um, it says right here. Verse 19. The son of man came eating and drinking. They say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard. Hmm. So they called Jesus a drunk. How about that? So... And a lot of times that, that will rub people the wrong way. This is not just in Matthew. It's also in Luke. Luke chapter chapter 7. Read it. Don't take my word for it. Read it. Um, and that rubs people the wrong way. And say, wait a minute. Jesus didn't drink. He wasn't a drunk. He wasn't. People call him that. It says right here. And if, you're, if you say that you're going to believe the word of God and you stand up on the Bible, you've got to believe all of it. You can't pick and choose. And I think that's one of the things that we try to do a lot of times. We try to pick and choose what we want to believe, what we don't want to believe, and we try to justify that. Well, that's not right. So if you're going to believe it, you got to believe it. And if you read it and it rubs you the wrong way, so be it. That's God at work. So let him work. Uh, because it also says right after that, that, you know, nobody knows the Father except the Son, and nobody knows the Son except the Father. And nobody will know the Father except the ones that the Son reveals to them, to, to him, reveals him to, right? So, so, you know, nobody really knows the Father or the Son except each other or the ones that Jesus wants to reveal the Father to. So how in the world is that going to happen? Um, well, one of the ways is... If you read scripture and it rubs you the wrong way, maybe like this, maybe that's God working on you because the Holy Spirit's involved here too, right? Have you, have you ever read scripture and you read the same passage over and over again and then you read it again and it, it's like it's brand new. It says something completely new to you, right? That's the Holy Spirit at work. It's not you 
reading it different or you having your the revelation or the epiphany that you get is because God is putting that on you right then. So he's wanting you to, to go somewhere different, to go somewhere deeper or something that you've never seen before. So a lot of times what one of the things that I've seen people do, especially here lately, and lately I'm talking, you know, like in the last you know, ever since I've been doing this in probably the last 50, 100 years, uh, is people are leaning more on doctrine and really denomination than, uh, than God. And it's a very slippery slope that you got to watch out for. It's, you got to be very careful that you worship God and you don't worship religion because religion is made by people. People make up rules that they want to follow. Um, and inside those rules, they start to lean on stuff so hard that that becomes the thing that they're actually trying to adhere to instead of adhering to what God would have them be or do. Um, you have to wear certain things. You gotta act a certain way. Um, you can't drink. You can't smoke. You can't, you know, do what's right. Be the best Christian. Um, you know, there's no such thing as a best Christian. We are all sinners. That's just the way it is. If you say you're not a sinner, you're making Jesus a liar. So Jesus didn't come here and die for nobody. If we proclaim that Jesus came here and died for each one of us, then that makes each one of us a sinner. So that's fine. Embrace it and own your junk and go with it. Um... But you got to stop, and, and we all have to stop trying to make God fit the mold that we want God to fit because of whatever. It makes us feel good, or it fits our doctrine, or it's whatever it is, fill in the blank. God is who God is. We need to meet God where he is instead of us trying to make God fit where we are. Um, and it's tough. It's not easy. Um, but, you, got, you know, it's, it's, it's worthwhile. Why? Because it gets you closer to knowing God, which is what you strive to do anyway. In, in, the, in the thirst for knowledge or the quest for truth, where do you think truth comes from? You know, who do you think truth is? Where, do you, who, where is wisdom? Read Proverbs. You'll see a lot about wisdom. Um, but in that search for truth, you know, Jesus says right here, um, come to me, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. He's saying, Hey, come where I am. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's not saying you won't work. He's not saying you won't have strife and, and trouble, but he's saying the yoke that I have, if you let, if you come to where I am, and you meet me how I am, my yoke is easy, and the burden I have is really light to carry. Why are you trying to carry around all that heavy stuff? Why are you, you constantly adding stuff to your back to carry, like don't do this, don't do this, follow this? I mean, why are you doing that? Jesus says right here, come to me, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. You will find rest for your souls. Why not that? Because think about it. If we strive to meet God and meet Christ like he is wanting to meet us, right? Instead of us trying to put rules on his kingdom, why don't we let God rule over us? In, instead of trying to let you rule over you or let the world rule over you, why don't you let God rule over you? Because it says right here, I mean, I, <laughs> I'm not, it just makes sense to me. If you let God rule over you, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden. That's us. And I will give you rest. Okay, so if we let God and, and Christ rule over us, he's going to give us rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I'm gentle and lowly in heart. You will find rest for your souls. Doesn't that sound good? 
My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Why in the world do you want to keep carrying around that heavy junk that you carry? All right? So instead of us trying to put rules on God's kingdom that we think are good, um, why don't we just simply live in his kingdom and let him give us that light burden. So let him, let, you know, give it over to him. You know, we need to quit holding on to worthless things that the world or ourself, you know, and we are influenced by the world that we want to put on extra rules and extra regulations and all this junk and simply live to God. Live to where God wants to meet us, at the place where he wants to take everything from us and give us an easy yoke and a light load that we can go through the world and actually enjoy some of his graces and not be burdened by whatever else that we want to make up. Because if you turn on a TV and you'll see it. Pick up your phone and look somewhere on YouTube or whatever it is, and you'll find all those heavy laden people wherever they are with whatever they've got. Um, so, you know, choose not to be. Choose to be somebody, one, one of the heirs of the kingdom of God and live that way. Live so it's an easy yoke and a light burden because that's exactly what Christ wants for us. It's up, but it, you know, I can't make you, you can't make me. We all have to choose. So please, that, that power of choice that God gives us, uh, use it wisely and don't take it for granted. Um, and go, go live a life that Christ wants us to live, which is one truly steeped in love, pure love that he has for us. And once you start doing that, it can't help but spread. So enjoy your day and enjoy your life. Get close as you can to God. Let's pray. Thank you, good Lord, for everything. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for giving us your ways and your peace and your love. And please do not let us take it for granted. In the precious name of Christ, we pray. Amen.